What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here at GSD Studios. First off, thank you so much for checking out today's content. I'll make this extremely fast, but I need to plug our sponsors that make this show possible. Our first sponsor is PerfectStormNow.com, by far the most effective and affordable real estate agent website and database platform in the industry. It is the system I use to sell 50 plus homes every single month. Check it out at www.perfectstormnow.com. Our second sponsor is my personal 90 day mastery bootcamp, which is again, my personal real estate agent mentorship program, where we spend 90 days together, 12 live sessions. You get daily access to me inside the program. You guys, we go so extremely in depth. There's nothing that's incomplete about this program. You're going to get all the tools that you need to go out there and crush it inside your real estate business. Make sure to go check us out. www.90daymastery.com. You can watch in depth videos videos of exactly what's covered to see if the program is for you, um, see all the raving testimonials we have from all of the amazing agents and clients that went through the program. So make sure to check us out, www.90daymastery.com. All right, you guys, let's jump on in to today's content. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode interview where every single week we interview top entrepreneurs and just straight up top badasses that are out there dominating their space. These are people choosing to not live life of mediocrity, but instead to go out there and create big, amazing, epic lives for themselves and their families, as well as have a positive impact on others while they exist. So today, you guys, we've got a really special guest in the show, guy I'm really stoked to have on. Um, so our guest today um, is known as the Rapid uh, Growth Guy. Um, he has uh, helped small business owners or is helping small business, business owners succeed. He's transformed more than 3,500 struggling businesses into profitable success stories. Um, he's also the founder and executive director of the Small Business Festival, which is ranked in the top five conferences in the nation by Inc. Magazine. Uh, he's an international uh, uh, sales blogger. He's been featured in Entrepreneur Magazine, Forbes Magazine, Inc. Magazine, Fortune, and, and many, many more. So really stoked and honored to have Matthew Pollard on the show. Welcome to the show, my friend. Mate, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I'm excited, man. I mean, you, you know, you, you've had massive success yourself in your own business, um, but then you've had huge success in helping other struggling entrepreneurs turn around their businesses and, and, and really their lives. And man, entrepreneurship, you know, it's one of those things that so many people want, but so many people struggle with, you know, and uh, so really, really stoked to, to dive in here. Um, but before we get into really what you're doing today, man, I'm really intrigued on your backstory of, you know, how did this all begin in the first place? Like if you were to want, rewind the clocks, you know, because I mean, you're a young dude, you know, right? <laughs> so if you were to rewind the clocks, where that looks like junior high, high school, college, like how did your personal entrepreneurship journey start in the first place? Yeah, definitely. And I, I think this is the first time I've ever been introduced as a badass. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I feel like I've truly made it. Uh, but the interesting part of it is that I shouldn't have been here at all. It was a complete accident. Uh, and while I, I'm a big believer in the, the adversities we experience in life actually stem the, at the success in our future. And I think it's never more true than my story. I mean, I grew up with the reading speed of a sixth grader in light high school. I had horrible acne and due to both of those things I, I was really quite introverted I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life and I convinced my father that I was going to take a year off to find myself and I took a job at a real estate agency and I wasn't the guy out selling I was the guy in the back office hiding away with a look on my face saying please don't talk to me I'm here finding myself for a year and I worked there for a few weeks and my boss comes up to me and he says, Matt, I've got some bad news. It's um, the company's closing down. Uh, you're out of a job. And I'd literally been there for a few weeks. I was, that, was my, that was my plan. And in Australia, we're kind of different to the United States in a lot of ways. But the most one is that Christmas in America is cold. Christmas in Australia is boiling hot. And it was your equivalent of about 120 degrees you know, we take our summer holidays and our Christmas holidays at the exact same time. And so if you want to get a job at that time, good luck. Most business owners are away for, from the, say the 20th of December to the 15th to 20th of January. It's horrific to try and get a job. The only job I could get was commission only sales. So I took a commission only sales job, which was terrifying enough. And then after five days worth of product training, I got thrown out on the street and they said, well, go sell. 
Of course, I was about to walk into my first door and I had this realization, no one really taught me how to sell. So door after door, I got rejected. I got told to get a real job. I mean, people are lovely when, especially around Christmas time, it was, it was, it was really bad. And I still remember I walked into my 93rd door and I made my first sale and I was, I was ecstatic. You know, I, I made $70. And until about 45 seconds later, when I had this horrible realization that I got to do this again tomorrow. And every day after that, it was horrifying. And, you know, I had a reading speed of a sixth grader, so I couldn't exactly pick up a Brian Tracy or a Zig Ziglar. I, you know, I would have taken me a year to read the book. There was just no way for me to do that. So what I did is, and I, I think when you've got your back up against the wall, you find solutions because you've got no option. And for me, not being able to learn how to sell or sales being that natural ability, you either have it or you don't, just didn't work for me because that would have meant a horrific year. So I learned, I I taught myself how to sell on YouTube. And yeah, I I know for a lot of people watching that there's actually more there than just cat videos. There's some really great stuff on YouTube. And I put a lot of stuff on YouTube now to repay back the favor. But I went in six weeks, I went from a person that was struggling to sell, uh, really having no business being in sales to the number one sales performer in the largest sales and marketing company in the Southern Hemisphere. It took six weeks. I then went, I got promoted about seven times in about a year. Uh, I then opened up my own business, which on year three, it turned over about $4.2 million uh, just in that year. We became the number one brokership for business to business mobiles in the country. And now right through to nationally accredited education, I've been responsible for five multi-million dollar success stories before coming to the US. And, but that was all bricks and mortar offline businesses. So, you know, if people, I'm almost embarrassed now to say that when people used to talk to me about email marketing and social media and all that sort of thing, I thought they were too scared to go out and actually sell. And I thought they were wasting my time. And, you know, now I'm a global brand and I built my business and pretty much every client that comes to me, everything that I do is completely inbound and it's all automated. Yeah, no, I love that, man. So, so, you know, you mentioned that, um, you know, because of, of with your reading level and the acne that you had as, as a young kid that you were very shy, very introverted, and now you're kind of tossed out in the streets, knocking on doors and door knocking and, you know, something for a lot of salespeople. And I get this question almost daily, you know, because as I told you before we hit the record button, a lot of our listeners are real estate agents and there's a lot of pound in the pavement, a lot of work on the phones, door knocking. And a lot of people just cannot get over that fear of rejection. Um, how did you go in from the guy in the back office, you know, right? Because your first door, I mean, you knocked 92, you had to get 92 no's before you got your yes. You know, how, how did you find yourself being able to face that, that massive fear that day number one? I think, to be honest, it was terrifying. I, I really wasn't comfortable doing it, but I promised my father that I was going to support myself. And my father broke his back for 80 hours a week, every week to support our family. We didn't come from a rich family. There was no way I was going to go and tell my father day one of this new job. Like the fact that the other company shut down, that was an excuse, right? I, I, sorry, I could get away with that as long as I was looking for new jobs. But as soon as I had the job offer and as soon as I got put on that street, there's no way I could go back to my father and say, sorry, mate, I'm going to have to be supported by you for another year while I'm finding myself because I can't find a job. There was no way that was going to happen. And so for me, it was, I made a commitment and I was going to keep it. And I think that, yes, it was terrifying. And there's actually a quote that I have on my phone that I, I constantly are reminded by when people ask me these questions, which is every moment of every day, you decide who you are and what you believe in. You get a second chance every second. (laughs) And the reason why that's so important to me, and you know, I don't mean it from a perspective of you change your religious beliefs every second, but how you define yourself as an individual is a story that you tell yourself. And you need to make that change if you need to be successful in something else. And it's, it's funny that what I learned on YouTube was that sales was a system, a system like anything other, anything else. Like you want to put a, a video like this onto iTunes, you've got to have a system. You want to do an account, a, a job as an accountant, right? You've got to learn the system. You don't have to have the gift of the gab to be a salesperson. You just have to learn the system for selling. And it's, it's funny, I got an endorsement just today, actually. I've got a book coming out in January called The Introvert's Edge. And the goal is that it, it teaches how the quiet and shy can outsell even their extroverted counterparts. And 
I got an endorsement from a commercial real estate, Colliers International, which was a small, just starting out commercial real estate agency in Austin. And they had these two bulldog salespeople, right? I'm talking guys that put their fists on the table and yell at the phone. That kind of person gets hyped up on coffee. And then they had this little shy introvert that his father was very well off. So they hired him because they handle the commercial real estate for that guy, right? So they hired him and they're like, well, we're going to have to get rid of him if he doesn't start to succeed soon. So I went and did some training for those three people. And the first thing I said to the, the extroverted people is, oh my gosh, what a horrible way to live, to get yourself hyped up on coffee like that every day just to get on the phone. And for the introverted person, I helped them understand that it was a system and you don't have to hard close. You don't have to be a salesperson as long as you're authentic and you follow a step-by-step -step process that just happens to lead to a sale. Well, about a month after the training, I think it was, sorry, it was two months after the training, they went from a $3 million business to a $4 million business. The number of appointments they made quadrupled, but the extroverted guys were still out selling the introvert. About 12 months later, I went back just to visit them, actually just before, because I'm on holidays at the moment. So just before I went on holidays, I popped in just to say hello. And I got a big hug from Thomas, who was the introverted guy. He had, he's the quarterly number one salesperson in the organization. And, the, you know, I'm getting tingles just talking about it. Um, I love the fact that I've been able, I mean, I went from terrified to sell, having no right being in sales, to teaching hundreds, thousands, hopefully one day millions, how to do that. And I think it all stems back from the fact that I wouldn't take no for an answer. I think you see it constantly out in the world these days, people achieving amazing things because they wouldn't take no for an answer. It's like the world's testing you, how much do you want it? And all these introverts uh, or extroverts that are hiding behind their laptops or listening to their phones and know they should be talking to customers, know they should be going to networking events, but are hoping that they don't have to do that. How much do they really want to be successful in their business? Because I mean, there's some study that talks about the average business coach makes $27,000 a year. And 90% and of the coaches that start don't get their first three clients, but once they do, they tend to go on for a very happy coaching career. Yet 90% of people don't even get their first three clients. How much did they really want to be coaches? So I think it's, the answer is, if you really want it, if you, if you believe that you've got your back up against the wall, you will make it happen. Yeah. No, I love that, man. I love it. So, um, yeah. And, and, you know, it sounds to me, you know, when, when you, to face that fear, you, you just got clarity on what mattered most. I mean, yeah, that rejection matters, but having that conversation with your father of, you know, sorry, I let, let you down again with this job, you know, that, that pain of that conversation was much greater than that rejection. And you got that clarity. And, and I just think a lot of people just don't spend that time in that deep clarity of, of, yeah, I mean, the pain exists, the fear exists, it sucks, but what really sucks more? You know, not creating that life that you want. And, and uh, so I love it, man. So, you know, I'm curious though, so you're, you're having all this personal success now with sales. I mean, you're, you're blowing this up, you're the, you're the top guy and, and not just your, your, your area, but it, and, you know, um, uh, uh, in a huge space. How does that transition then, like what led you to getting into more of the, the coaching consulting aspect compared to just staying and building your own, um, your own continued business? Yeah, so I think, you know, I'm going to explain this in two steps for you. So what I found is when I was successful in my own businesses, I was, ex I was really excited for the first six months, slightly excited for the next six months, kind of bored for the next year and kind of over it for the year after that. So I always lived in that phrase and I was like, why is it that I'm always miserable? Well, the reason why I was always miserable with what I was doing after a very short period of time is it wasn't aligned with what I was truly passionate about. And I think that's one of the biggest problems. Like most people look for a gap in the market. I mean, this is what modern day marketing teaches you. Look for a gap in the market, then create a message for that market, then create the sales system for that market. Now we've got a business. Well, as a service provider, as a real estate agent, as a videographer, as a business coach, even as a person that sells a widget, because people buy from people, not from, they don't buy companies, they buy people these days. So you've got to have, if you're not aligned with yourself, you're going to eventually be miserable and you're probably going to find that you don't even enjoy doing what you do and you're going to find the whole sales process inauthentic. So for me, what happened was I got very good at finding holes in the marketplace creating you know, unmet needs in the market, creating messages for that, and then creating the sales system. 
What I realized is if I created a message around what I was passionate about, what my why was, that made all the difference. Because my passion, my why was always around helping people. And I started to get a taste with that. Like I went into the world very similar to a lot of everybody does. I wanted to get rich. I wanted to make money. And what I found was that once you get there, if you're not doing it with something that you love, what's the point? So for me, what I did is I went through this interesting trajectory. And for people that are going through this phase of trying to reignite that motivation inside themselves or trying to figure out what their business model is or wondering why they're not congruent with their business. Well, I've got a, a podcast myself. It's called Better Business Coach. And episode 17 is called Forget About Goals. Why is the key to success? See, in neurolinguistic programming, we learn that we're presented with 2 million bits of information every single second. Our brain, the supercomputer that it is, processes about 126 bits. So in short, we delete, distort, and generalize everything we see, feel, hear, and touch based on our beliefs, our values, our past experiences, and a subset of that is our goals. So if we don't have absolutely laser-sharp goals, we miss opportunities that were right there in front of us the whole way. So for me, my goals were, you know, people inherit their goals from their mother, their father, their drunk roommate they had in college. And for me, I inherited this goal that I needed to create a big business that was going to make me incredibly wealthy, right? And I needed to impress dad. Right. So for me, that like going back to what you were talking about before about my wants overwhelming my fear, 100% because I was laser focused on not giving up because I couldn't go home to tell my father that I'd failed. As I grew into businesses for myself, what I realized is my first business was in telecommunications because it was all I knew. As I progressed from business to business, what I realized is I got closer to helping the small business owner become successful in business. My last business was a nationally accredited educational facility. We taught three and a half thousand business owners how to create the solid foundations under their business. And I really loved doing that. But what I loved most was teaching them how to get out of their functional skill and focus on their marketing and their sales. So for me, when I did this exercise for myself, because I created this exercise for myself to get myself into what I loved, I noticed two things happen. One was it became obscenely obvious that anything that focused on anything else outside the rapid growth equation at the start was boring to me and I didn't want to be doing it. The second thing is as soon as I realized that, it became very clear what I needed to do and all of a sudden I, got, I was always energetic. But now I can be out on a three-day bender, I get onto this interview and I have got avalanches of energy because I love doing what I did. I mean, I went to Thanksgiving um, you know, my, uh, with my, my girlfriend's family last year, they were all at the house. I had a KXAN interview at five o'clock in the morning, a Fox seven one at seven 30 in the morning. And then I had a nine hours shoot that day at, at a video studio. And at the end of that day, all the camera team were exhausted and I was still, I was still going strong. Right. So having that strength does a few things. The first thing it does is it over. So what happens is a lot of entrepreneurs focus is wrong. And that's why the pain doesn't out, uh, doesn't, Sorry, the gain doesn't outweigh the pain. So if you've got that laser focus, it will. You'll push yourself to do things that you, didn't, uh, you never would have thought possible, but you'll also see opportunities that were right there in front of you the whole time. Because most people have got divergent goals, they're missing opportunities right there in front of them. It's like going to a networking event where they have seven business cards or they're trying to explain the 12 things that they do as a videographer. It doesn't work. You've got to have that laser focus. But then once you do that, the next major important thing is to be able to express that and communicate that in the most important, in, in, in the most concise way. So I tell people that I'm the rapid growth guy. I help organizations large and small obtain rapid growth. And as soon as I started to explain what I did from a point of this is what I'm passionate about, this is what my whys are, so here is my strong and unified message. When people ask me about it, I wasn't talking about the features and benefits. I wasn't telling stories that were external to me. What I noticed is I was explaining the value of what I provided from a place of authenticity and a place of center. And that made all the difference. So now when I coach people, I, you know, I'm crazy when it comes to a coach. Most coaches talk about these long-term clients and having monthly subscriptions. I coach clients for three sessions over six hours and then I'm done. And I'm like, I'm not holding your hand after that. You don't need me. You've got all the strategy. You know how to market your business. You know how to your sales system. You already got an ROI. You don't need me anymore. And I've got a waiting list of clients to do that, which is great because I fixated on the fact that I wanted to create this model. And I think that's what most people get stuck on. For me and for everyone else listening, it's understand what you're passionate about. Build the business around that. And for me, 
all the all, all beforehand, all the businesses I created were businesses around making money. Now my business is centered around making me happy, being authentic, doing what I absolutely am passionate about, which is helping service providers rapidly grow their business. But it, and it comes from a point of authenticity. And now I make money so much easier than I ever did before because I don't have to drag myself kicking and screaming to make money. I get to do what I love every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. I love it. So then, you know, when you talk about, you know, cause like you talked that story about on Thanksgiving day, how everybody else was drained and, and you, you know, you're still on fire. And, and I agree that there, there's such a huge difference between taking action and having true and, ins, you know, inspired action. Right. And, and once you find that, that clarity of purpose, um, that inspired action really comes into play. But a lot of people they, I mean, they, they, they don't really, they have a difficult time discovering what that purpose is, what they're truly passionate about. You know, I, I mean, I've talked to a lot of people that's like, Hey, when I first got into business, I, it was about the money. Like they had a young you know, family they had to support and, and, and they were passionate about it because they were passionate about creating opportunities for their kids. Now their kids are out of the house, self-sustaining on their own. And they're like, man, I can't get this fire back, you know? Right. So like, what kind of advice do you give somebody that's having a difficult time finding that purpose or finding that passion that just, just is, is really having a difficult time with that? So, and depending on how long we give, uh, we have, I might give you a step-by-step -step plan on exactly what I would do. But first, the biggest thing that I can share with you is that what I've found through working with so many clients is most people fear that they can't make money doing what they love. So they focus on something that they know they can make tangible money out of. But what happens is they end up making less money doing that. The amount of people I've worked with where I've got them back to what they're passionate about and they've actually made more money than they ever thought possible just because they were focused on what they were passionate about, opportunities started to present themselves. And actually, I'm sure everybody listening probably knows Jim Carrey. And Jim Carrey won this major award at his university and he had this really long speech and it was amazing, the speech, but he, started, he, he said something in the, in the middle of it that made such an impact on me. He said his father could have been, his father was a really funny man. He could have been an amazing comedian. But he decided to take the safe choice and become an accountant instead. Many years later, his dad was laid off and his family had to do what they had to do to survive. He learned a great deal of things from his father, but nothing more important than you can fail at what you don't want. So why not take a chance at what you love? What happens is every single time I work with somebody, I find that they're either working on a project that they're less excited about but think they can make money out of. And then as soon as they transition, they actually make more money quicker focusing on what the thing they are passionate about. Or they do what's called hedging. Now, we learn about hedging growing up, right? It's how you invest in shares. You hedge in all these different shares and that way you don't lose your shirt on one of them. Well, here's the news. You've got small amounts of resources, small amounts of time, small amounts of finances. So if you've got your passion project over here that you're working on, but you're also doing this thing that you know you can make money out of, now your 126 bits of information are focused in two directions. You're not going to be as successful as you need to. So my suggestion to everybody, and I've worked with people that have got kids, and I, you know, my, goal, my consulting model is I work with people for six hours over six weeks, and we get to an ROI in that period of time. And I've never seen, I've never worked with a business except for somebody that's just starting brand new product and they've got to develop the product that hasn't been able to transition in that time. Because what it is, is as soon as you've got that avalanche of energy, you find it flows, right? I've had people that I've, they wouldn't, they wouldn't separate from the thing they were passionate about versus the thing they could make money out of. And I said, cool, write a blog article on both. So of course they go to the one they can make money out of first and it takes them two days to do it. Then I, they come back to me and they say, okay, that one did. I'm not sure if I'll have enough time to write the other. And I say, well, why don't you try? You've got a few hours. It flows out of them and they've written it because now we can be a lot more productive. So the thing that most people struggle with is when they're focused on the thing that they can make money out of is they start to encapsulate it based on what their functional skill is. So they'll say, oh, I'm a business coach or I'm a branding expert or I'm a marketing specialist or I'm a podcaster or a writer or a videographer. The problem with that is it's external faced and you become a commodity. Everybody is going to be a commodity when they're focused on just the features of, and benefits of what they do. It's about bringing it back to center. And I'll give you an example because I'm a big believer that everybody has a unique set of skills and competencies that makes them vastly different. And because you've got a commercial real estate 
audience, um, sorry, real estate audience. I can give you an example for that at the end. But I had a client, uh, Wendy, who was a language coach out of California. And she taught kids and adults how to learn Mandarin. And she came to me and she said, Matt, I've got a real problem. You know, there's lots of people moving into California that want to teach Mandarin and they're willing to charge $30 to $40 an hour when I'm charging $50 to $80. I'm also struggling with all these people on Craigslist now from China willing to do it at $10 to $15 an hour. I mean, we live in a global economy now, right? How can I compete in this crowded market? My response was that no one wins in a battle to the bottom based on price, right? You need to avoid the battle altogether. So I looked at all the clients she had, and she had hundreds of them where she was working with them on teaching the Mandarin. But there were two clients where she helped them. Um, she helped them with three other things. And there were being executives being relocated across to China. The first one the she, thing she helped them with was this concept called Galaxy. Now, when I talk about Galaxy to people in the US or Australia, they're like, oh, you're talking about outer space. No, this is actually their version of the Chinese version of rapport. So if I was going to sit down with you and have a conversation about and selling you something, if I was a bad salesperson at the end of that uh, meeting, I would say, so do you want to buy from me? And you would either say, yes, no, or our favorite, let me think about it. And if you said, let me think about it, I'd call you back a week from now and ask you the same question. If you told me you wanted to think about it again, well, the chances of me getting that sale are getting less and less, right? So instead, um, when you go to China, they probably want to meet with you five or six times before they even talk business. They're probably going to want to see you drunk over karaoke once or twice. Now, the reason for this is they're talking not transactional or 12 or 24 month deals. They're talking about 50 to 100 year contracts. It's longer than a lot of people's lives and marriages. They want to know the kind of person they're getting into bed with. The second thing she helped them understand was the difference between e-commerce in China and e-commerce in the Western world. And the third thing she helped them understand was the importance of respect. She helped them understand that learning the language wasn't enough. Unless they tried to reduce their accent, then they would be seen as disrespectful. It's the same as I spoke at Electro, Electrolux in front of 100 vice presidents. And if you just hand somebody a card or they hand you a card, you're supposed to hold it, cherish it, look at it, every detail, flip it over, look at the entire back before pulling out your card case, putting it in, slightly bowing, and then putting it in your pocket. Anything less than that, you're not doing business in China. And I said, Wendy, you're doing so much more for these people than just pure language coaching. What are you doing? She said, Matt, they're just a few things. I'm like, Wendy, you're stuck in your functional skill. Is it fair to assume as a result of these things, you're, these people are going to be more, more successful when they get to China? She said, well, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm hoping for. I said, great. Why wouldn't we call you the China success coach then? And why wouldn't we call your program, forget about Mandarin, let that go to the $10 an hour people. Let's call it the China Success Intensive and let's focus on these skills. So we created this program. It was a five-week program that worked with the executive, the spouse, and any children being relocated across to China. Now, why the spouse and the children? Well, we can charge more. We're in business. We like to do that. But secondly, you think about it. You've got the spouse and the children going there. They're not going to be successful when they get there. The executive is going to get called home. It's important the whole family unit is successful when they get there. So she then said, well, this sounds great. How would I find customers? Do I reach out to executives? I said, no, they're not your customer. She said, you're right, the corporation. I said, it's still not your customer. She said, well, then who? And I said, well, who you'd reach out to if it was me was the immigration attorney. See, for me, when I moved to the United States, I had to get a visa and then I had to get a green card. Anyone going to China has to do the exact same. So we did. She reached out to these people and she said, how would you like to make a $3,000 commission for any successful introduction to the China success coach? And they said, well, that's great. What would I have to say? I mean, Three to 5,000 is all I make for doing all the bureaucracy, all the paperwork, and finding the client to do a visa. And she simply said, all you would need to say is, congratulations, you've now got your visa. I just want to double check. Are you as ready as possible to be relocated across to China? And they would respond, yeah, we, I mean, we've got our visa now. Thank you. We've learned the, the language. We're getting pretty good at it. Um, we've got our place organized. I think we're good. And they would, she would simply get them to respond there's a lot more to it than that. I think you need to speak to the China success coach. Now, these people were terrified about going to China. I mean, I was terrified coming from Australia to America, and we even speak the same language. The corporations had so much money riding on it, they were open to any idea that was going to make them more successful. So when you got on the phone for a $3,000 commission check to the easiest customers in the world, and she made her program was $30,000, so she made $27,000 after commission for the easiest sale in the world. That's the power of a, a unified message. See, if Wendy had started with sales, she would have already lost. 
So if you think about it, Wendy focused on Mandarin and she had these unique skills that were external to what her functional skill was. And everybody comes from unique educations, unique upbringings, unique past customer experiences that uniquely qualify them to help a certain group of people with amazing things. And for Wendy, she grabbed all of those things for Galaxy, e-commerce and respect and the higher level benefit of that was China success. For me, I'm a business coach, a branding expert, social media strategist, a sales trainer, a master in neuro-linguistic programming. I'm too many things and nobody cares. But when I talk about my high level benefit that I help organizations large and small obtain rapid growth, I'm the rapid growth guy, the simplicity of that message gets me heard in a crowded market. So what happens is by discovering what you're passionate about and working out what unique skill sets you have, all of a sudden you can tap into a marketplace and message that marketplace in a unique way to a group of customers that are willing to pay you a premium to work with you. And that's why you can feel comfortable moving to doing what you're passionate about regardless of what stage in your life you're at because there is no risk as long as you follow the entire process of making sure you do what you, you love and you're passionate about it and you're connected to that and then crafting a message and then communicating that in the most effective way. Yeah, no, I, I love it, man. It's so brilliant, you know, because, I mean, entrepreneurship, I mean, there, it can be, depending on the business that you're in, it can be such a crowded space. And, and as you said, you know, I mean, so many people have that, that mentality of the race to the bottom where nobody wins instead of identifying, connecting the dots and, and identifying that value and, and just repositioning. Um, what would you say when you're working with, and, and I, I know you just gave that in-depth story with Wendy, but when you're, I mean, the, you, you successfully helped over 3,500 small business owners, entrepreneurs go out there and, and rapidly increase their profit. Um, what would you say like, and I know that this might be tough, but what would you say are like the top three things, the top three mistakes, if you will, that they're making? Because a lot of them are brilliant at what they do. They're just not positioning themselves like you talked about with Wendy in the correct manner what would you say those those top three mistakes are that uh, these entrepreneurs are doing that once they correct these it just skyrockets their business into that rapid growth definitely so the first thing is most people are so unaligned with their passion and why they do what they do that there's just there's no drive there there's no excitement it almost becomes impossible to articulate what you do in a unified way because you really you're not, it doesn't get you into your flow. So it's so important that people really align with their passions and their whys. The second thing is most people just don't spend any time on their marketing. I mean, it's embarrassing that, I mean, I've got a five-step template where I take people through and I do this, you know, if you go to matthewpollard.com forward slash growth, you can download this five-step process that'll talk you right through how to create your unified message and discover your niche of willing to buy clients. But I did this at the National Freelance Conference in front of nearly 100 and, 190, maybe 200 uh, small businesses that were all freelancers. And we spent 45 minutes doing this template. And at the end of it, I said, now who here has got a unified message that they feel more comfortable with, that they feel that would really easily help them get more customers? That 97% of the room put their hands up. Now, some of those people have since gone on to double the size of their business, and I've got testimonials for that. But the saddest part about this is I said, now keep your hand up if this is more time than you've spent on marketing since you started your business. 85% of the room kept their hands up. That's horrific. And what that means is that we focus on our functional skill and we don't focus on our marketing. So we don't craft our unified message. We don't look for a niche of willing to buy clients. We say, oh, no, I'm just going to sell to everyone until I get find my feet. Well, news for you. Why are you selling to everybody? There are people more experienced out there outselling you, beating you on price, and you're always going to lose. Unless you discover a niche of willing to buy clients, you're always going to be fighting a losing battle either on price or disqualification because you're not the most experienced, right? My education company, we sold to tradespeople, right? People that worked on a building site. We understood our customers better than they understood themselves. And because of that, we made more sales. If we had just been a school like anyone else, then we would have had a really tough time to show people why we were the best for the job. So for me, it's understand what you're passionate about. Then work out what your unified message is and what your niche is, right? And spend the time doing it. Like everybody that's listening, just block out four hours. It doesn't take long. If you spend four hours, just block out that time, block it out in your calendar in the next month, 
do forget about goals. Why is the key to success? It's a podcast, right? Go to <laughs> episode 17 of Better Business Coach, download it and do the exercise. Then go to matthewpollard.com forward slash growth. It's a free worksheet. Go through the five steps to creating your unified message and your niche of willing to buy clients. And you'll be so far down the path of, of, of where you need to be. And then the next thing that people do wrong is they avoid, the, they avoid learning how to sell. They buy into this concept that they're either a good salesperson or a bad salesperson and they let that own them. Now, I mean, Brian Tracy, who's endorsed my book, talks about the fact that the top 10% of all sales performance have a planned presentation. Yet, introverts and extroverts alike quite frequently never learn how to have a planned process, a step-by-step -step -step process that leads to a sale. Most introverts assume that they can't do it, so they awkwardly approach a sale, they have an uncomfortable process, and then they have to do that hard close, which I would never suggest anyone does. It makes me feel disgusting if I'd have to do it, right? So it's about learning that sales process that takes you step-by-step -step through to a place that just naturally progresses into a sale. But most people don't understand that it's something they can learn. They don't understand that it's a skill, just like any other, that can be learned, mastered, and perfected. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, it sounds to me like you, you work with so many clients in so many different spaces and there, there seems to be this like huge myth out there that like, Oh, that sounds great. You know, but that, that's not going to apply to my space. My business is different. And you know, what, what are some of the top, would you say like limiting beliefs or myths that a lot of these entrepreneurs have when it comes to those where, where they just get in their own way and uh, uh, allow themselves due to those limiting beliefs to not ha create that rapid growth. Well, firstly, yes, you are different. And that is why you can have a unified message. If you weren't different, you could only explain yourself by your commodity, right? So every single person I've called videographers, narrative strategists, I've called ghostwriters, authority architects, those messages separate you, right? So yes, I have worked with a lot of different people. And every time I have to admit, like there's times that I've worked with a client, I've started, I'm like, oh, this is the one that's going to catch me out. Like <laughs> this one, like from the initial phone call, I have no idea whether this is going to work, but I've trusted in the system. And I've never had a client that we didn't lead to a successful outcome because once you become clear on your passions and sometimes you'll spend more time on passion, sometimes on the message, sometimes on the strategy, it always works. So the most limiting belief you write is that my business is different. So the average strategies won't work for me. I have not found a business yet that this strategy doesn't work for and that other strategies don't work for. The next problem that I see people have is the limiting belief of I'm not different right? I'm exactly the same as everyone else. That's not true. You all have unique educations, unique upbringings, uh, unique past experiences that qualify you to help a different demographic of people. Every time I've seen this, even with VAs where they specialize, they go to a niche, they craft a unified message and their sales skyrocket and so do their price tags. So it's definitely not true. The other is I'm too old. I'm not good enough, right? I'm too old. Well, that's just not true. I mean, what was it? The guy, um, KFC chicken, the Colonel, right? He didn't make any money until he was in his sixties. That's just not true. It's what you're using it as an excuse. And you're telling yourself that not to feel bad about not putting energy into it so that you don't feel like you have your back up against the wall. You're not good enough. Well, I was a guy with the reading speed of a sixth grader in late high school, horribly introverted, horrible acne. I didn't mention the braces. And I also didn't mention that I took a glass to the face and had 26 stitches across the side of my face at the age of 22 right? If I can do it, anybody can. Stop giving yourself excuses. We tell each other. I've, I had a, a person in my online academy uh, called Nando who, you know, talked about, he, we were having a conversation and I just happened to walk into him. He lives in Austin where I'm from. And I walked into him and in three sentences, he made three negative statements about his life. And I said, Nando, I'm going to have to stop you here. Those stories you've been telling yourself are only true because you keep telling them. As soon as you make a decision to make that mindset shift, everything will change. There's an app called ThinkUp that I suggested where I talked about giving you positive affirmations and constantly focusing on positive language because statistically, you've got to hear at least three positive things to disqualify any negative one. And I've had clients um, that I've worked with would literally had a war with themselves because they would literally say a million things to them that were negative every day. How can you ever get out from underneath that? So there are a whole load of struggles. The other one and the biggest mistake that most people, uh, sorry, the biggest mindset issue is that they weren't built to be a salesperson. They weren't built to be in marketing, right? Well, that's just not true. 
It's like saying I wasn't built to do my bookkeeping, yet every single person that owns a business does their own like cloud computing, right? It's just not true. I mean, sales is obscenely easy. I mean, when you first started in your profession, I mean, I worked with a, I'm trying to give you a good example. You know, I worked with a, a SAS, uh, sorry, an Oracle sales company. Each one of those people had spent three years doing a degree, probably two, uh, another two, three years doing an, a, a master's degree, and then learning special training and developing themselves over 10 years. And then they say to me, they're not meant to be a salesperson. I'm like, cool, how long did you spend learning this stuff? If I had have said, explain to me SAS like you know now at, at, at the very start or explain to me what an Oracle stack is, you wouldn't be able to do it, would you? And you would assume, you're going to say, no, I wasn't meant to be um, selling Oracle products. That's just not true. You just needed 16 years worth of learning to get to where you are now. How long have you spent learning how to sell? And they'll be like, oh, well, I've been to a few appointments and it's not working for me. Okay. How much did you, time did you spend learning it? I mean, I can show you 27,000 ways. I, I, can, I can try and build a house 27,000 times and probably not learn a thing. Or I could just pick up a book, learn how to build a house, and I've probably got a much higher success rate, right? So learning sales is one of the biggest mindsets that people have. They're like, no, I just want to tinker. I want to build a business around me, my family, and my life where I can do what I love. No, I don't want to be selling. Well, that's the thing that makes you able to do it. And selling can be fun as long as it comes from a point of authenticity and you follow a system where you don't have any hard closing. So just moving away from those limiting mindsets is probably one of the biggest things. It's like in my online program, I have a, you know, right up front, the first thing we do is we dissolve all those limiting mindsets because otherwise people just can't get through. You can't think about unified messaging and structuring something around what you're passionate about if you're still limited by the belief that you can't be successful and you can't make money doing what you love. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Powerful stuff. So then, you know, I know earlier in the podcast, you mentioned that, um, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if resistance is the correct word, but, but it sounded like, you, you know, you weren't sold on, on digital marketing, email marketing, social media, you know, marketing. And, and now I know that you're an expert in that space. I mean, what, what kind of shifted, um, that allowed you to step into that space and, and how important you think for entrepreneurs is it today to make sure that they are in that space? So firstly, I wouldn't say that I wasn't sold on it. I would say that I was disgusted by people that did that and told me that that was the way to do it. Like I had this perception, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I'll share it because it's important that everybody hears it is that when people told me that digital, marketing was the way to go and Facebook ads as well this is before Facebook ads but Facebook and email marketing and and those sorts of things I assumed it was because they were too scared to go out and sell I assumed it was because they were trying to hide behind their laptops now that actually is true a lot of people are afraid to get out from behind their laptops but that didn't mean I was right either it's a combination of the two right you've got digital marketers that are terrified to pick up the phone and you've got people that are ter- that like me that was ter- I was terrified of it online because it was something I didn't understand. The answer is somewhere in between, right? So for me, one of the biggest things that I do, I, you know, a lot of times I'll get on the phone and I'll speak to people. Like if, I, if, if I'm trying to sell something, my digital marketing will stimulate a phone call. And I'll have that phone call and it may re- result in a sale. It may result in a book endorsement. It may result in a speaking gig. It could result in a number of different things but I'm not afraid to pick up the phone, but that doesn't mean that digital marketing doesn't work. So I had email marketing people come. I mean, we had a really successful business, but it was all offline, right? So I had all these people come and tell me about these things. And in my mind, I'm like, why do you need that? I'll just hire more salespeople. Well, when I came to the United States, now here is the, here is the clincher. So for me, I just explained about finding what you're passionate about. Now I hated anyone in the online world, right? Offline was the way it was. But then I discovered what I was passionate about is helping organizations rapidly grow. Now, if I wanted to help organizations rapidly grow, and that's all I wanted to do, I wanted to work with clients through three sessions to help them get their unified message, get their niche of willing to buy clients and create their sales system. How could I do that and have a profitable business? I mean, at the end of those three sessions, I've got to find a new client. That means I've got to go out and sell. I've got to go out and prospect. There wasn't enough money in it to do it, no matter how much I charged. So I needed to find a new way to drive clients where I didn't, I, where I couldn't, where I didn't have to pay for salespeople because the salespeople would get me the client if I had a long-term business, but then I'd have to charge a monthly subscription and that's not what I was interested in. So my passion drove me to change my limiting belief. 
Okay, as I said at the start, you know, you, you can, um, at, at every moment of every day, you decide who you are and what you believe in, you get a second chance every second. Well, now it was my second chance. So I said, okay, I don't believe that online will work. Literally had that in my head. I don't believe that online will work. However, if it was going to work, how would it work? So I became a student of online and over the space of two months, I read, I read maybe three books and 60 blog posts a week. And when I say I read, I listened to them because for me, my reading speed is still slow, right? So I listened to them over that two months. And I, I'm one of the things I'm really good at is synergizing information. And what I realized, and I bet you everyone out there feels the same way, is most people give you half the information. You know, there's people that specialize in social media. There's people that specialize in messaging. There are, but the people from social media need help with messaging and the messaging people need help with social media and the Facebook and, and the email people need help with the messaging and the social media, right? So there were all these pieces of information out there. So what I did is I started to piece all of that together. And I, you know, I now have created this into my Rapid Growth Academy because what I found is that everyone else was just as overwhelmed as me so I created an academy, which is the complete A to Z of how to create rapid growth in your business where you don't need any other program. You do this, it'll do the foundations, it'll do the offline stuff, and it will do the online stuff. Because I found that if you buy one program, then it would suggest another program and you'd have to piece it with this other program and eventually the pieces didn't quite go together. But over two months, I figured out all the pieces. You know, I interviewed people, I got on phone calls with people, I quarantined the information, and then I put my strategy in action. And over nine months, it, it took me nine months to go from having no online presence to being the uh, internationally award-winning blogger, the 43rd most retweeted business coach on Twitter. And I still remember talking to my girlfriend, Brittany, and I was like, oh, I've got 3,000 followers on Twitter, whatever that means. Like literally, whatever that means. I still didn't know what that meant because for me, who cares if you've got followers? It only matters if you make money off them. Right. But it was what happens is people focus on social media and that doesn't work. They fo focus on they, they focus on email marketing. It doesn't work. It's the combination of all of it pieced together that works. It's the social media driving people back to great content, the great content, but then the, 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 the pop-ups and the, the things that ask for the email in exchange for other great pieces of value. Then the email system that comes off that gives them huge amounts of value, but then also suggests a phone call. And then the phone call that then leads to the sale or the, instead of the phone call or webinar, whichever you prefer to go, that makes online work. But what happens is people start creating content or they start going on social media and they focus on one of these elements and it goes horribly wrong. Once I realized it could be built, it, that each one of the strategies was a waste of time or could get you small returns. But when you bring them all together, all of a sudden you can create an unstoppable momentum and a rapid growth business. Then you know, all of a sudden everything just changes. I mean, you and I are talking on this podcast right now. I've been on, you know, some of the biggest podcasts in the world. And I know when I go in and I have this conversation and this is where you, you know, come from behind the curtain, right? I've accidentally dropped in certain links right throughout this interview. That's because I've got the system that works, right? So people will go and utilize those systems and eventually it will lead to people being on a phone call with me or people being raving fans because the free content helped them create rapid growth. Either way, I win, but your podcast is going to exist forever. So while I could do one sales meeting to lead to one possible client, your interview will be listened to by thousands of people over tens of years. And that means that I constantly get to benefit from it. So what I see is with sales, it's like having a self-employment job because as soon as you stop putting in energy, it all stops. But online marketing, once you build, and this is where people get it wrong, they build a podcast with no monetization model, they build social media with no product, they build a website with no outreach, and they focus on you know, a weekly podcast and they just focus on the doing without the overall system. If you have an overall system, then wow, your business grows. But if you combine your online business with your offline business, because you're not afraid to pick up the phone, you're not afraid to talk to people. And you know, so for my system, it books people into talking to me. And when I talk to them, I have a great time. And if I feel like, you know, at the end of the call, I'll say, you know, at this stage, I can direct you to some more great free content that will continue on the path of rapid growth. I can talk to you about what working, uh, sorry, I can talk to you about an online academy that I've created where you can work with a, a group of like-minded service providers I can talk to you about what working with me would look like. Do you have a preference? And whichever way, whatever they say, I respect that. But I don't have to do any hard selling. I don't have to do any cold calling. I get 
15, 20 of these phone calls every single week. And that's, that's my business model. And now it's becoming so much. That's why I built the online academy because I was booked solid three months in advance. And now I built the webinar because I just can't take on as many calls as I'd like, right? So that's the automation. And that's why online works because if you do it properly, it delivers results. Yeah, no, I love it. And it's so powerful. And you're so, you're so right in that, you know, like I've taken, let's just say so many different webinar courses, right? And it's like, okay, here, here, here's how you build the, the perfect webinar. You sell on the webinar, you structure the webinar, but then they're not teaching you, okay, well, how do I do Facebook ads to fill the webinar? And so now, and now you got this awesome, amazing webinar, but you can't get anybody show to it. And that's how so many of these programs work. It isn't the A to Z like you talked about. There's always these incomplete components. You know, it, it's like you get sold, you know, just a piece of the puzzle, not all the pieces. Oh, look, it drives me insane. I mean, I, I give the average cancellation rate with online academies is 30 to 40% right? They give like a 30 day refund and it's a 30 to 40% of those people will cancel. Mine currently, and I've got, I launched, I, I launched it unofficially. I haven't actually sent it out to my list yet, but I launched it unofficially, you know, in February and there's over 110 people in it already. And my cancellation rate's less than 1%, right? And that's because, and I say like less than 1% because literally one person canceled that didn't watch the videos, Right. So if you learn how, I mean, cause you need, if you want to do that, you want to learn how to create an online Academy, but you also need to learn how to create a webinar and learn how to do the follow-up campaign and learn how to drive the traffic there. But before any of that, you've got to learn how to actually get the message right. Because all these people are like, they're, they're focused on the tactics, right? How do I use social ads? Well, social ads are expensive unless you've got a message that inspires people to want to know more. Right. And then it's, it's a lot, if you don't speak to a niche of willing to buy clients, then it's going to be hard as well because those people don't see the value in what you do because it's for everybody. You've got to have strong stories that resonate your value. Like the story I told you of Wendy, right? So there's so much groundwork you need. Like really the focus, the plan you need to have is that you need to get your goals right, understand your passion. You need to get rid of those limiting beliefs in your mindset. You then need to craft a unified message that excites and inspires customers to want to know more. You need to then learn, uh, discover your niche of willing to buy clients. Once you have all of that, then you need to create packaging and imp- packaging and pricing that inspires your clients to express purchasing behavior and then craft stories that seed your value. Once you've done all of that, then go out and network and learn how to va- and validate all of that actually works. Because otherwise, I've seen people spend years on an online website without ever going out and speaking to a real person and their message sucked. That's the problem. They're like, why don't people buy? I've focused on all these tactics. Why is it not working? Because your story sucked, your message sucked, nothing worked. So you go to networking and validate people are actually excited about what you're saying. People are actually interested and want to know more. And then once that's the case, you test your stories to make sure it does seed your value. Then learn how to sell offline so you're not scared of that. So when you have an online inquiry, instead of emailing them back, I had a ghostwriter that had all these people emailing him about working with him. And he assumed that the reason why when it got to price, they wouldn't work with him or then he never heard from them again is because they couldn't afford it. It had nothing to do with that. It's, he was a ghostwriter. Clearly those people hated writing and he was corresponding via email because he was too scared to book, tell them to book a phone call with him. So now he just responds saying, thank you, Mr. Car- really great to hear from you, Mr. Customer. I'm so glad that you reached out to me. I just finished working with somebody very similar to you and we had a great working relationship. And that's really what it comes down to, relationship, because a good ghostwriter and a good author have to have a great relationship. And also I need to get on the phone with you to understand a little bit more about the value, uh, what you're trying to achieve with the book before I can give you an official price. So I'd love for you to book a call at the below scheduling link so we can get on that call and work out whether the right fit and also so I can give you a price. All of a sudden, he was a $120,000 business in four months. I mean, this was a guy that struggled to make $27,000 in 2013 and made 12,000 in 2014 by October when he called me. He made 300,000 the following year, right? All because he was willing to pick up the phone. And then once you've got all of that created, then you can focus on online. Now, it can take only five weeks, right? Which is what I do with my online academy students. But you've got to, you've got to focus on each one of those steps first, then go online. Now, five weeks sounds like an eternity for people in small business. But think about how long you've been struggling to succeed. If you add all that time up, it adds up to a lot more than five weeks. 
Yeah, yeah, love it. So you know, you talked about um, you know your 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 one on one option that you have um, with the with the six hours with, with working with you one on one, but kind of give us a, an idea of the academy. I mean, um, what what what's inside there? What can people expect? Where can they go to learn more about it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can go to my website, which is matthewpollard.com. Um, and in the, at the top, uh, top right, you'll see a button that says Academy. Uh, you'll also, there's also, um, you, if you go to matthewpollard.com forward slash webinar, it'll take you right through the, the three core pillars of what I consider rapid growth. And then it will talk to you about the Academy. And there's a good discount in there if you watch the, the webinar at the moment. So you can definitely check that out. Um, but what's in the Academy is... It predominantly focuses on the first module, if you like, is around setting the solid foundations. The second module is around outbound selling. And the third module is about automating it so you don't have to do outbound ever again. So the focus is that it really goes through goals and mindset, unified message, niche marketing is week two. Week three is packaging, pricing, and creating strong stories that resonate your value, plus learning out how to be on podcast interviews, how to get on them, how to be on, get on TV, how to get articles placed in, in websites, that sort of thing. Then week four is all about creating a strong networking uh, spiel so that people are engaged and that you know, they want to talk to you more and embedding your unified message and your stories into that to go out and validate to make sure people are interested. Week five gives you my introvert's edge system to selling. It, it, you know, my book's coming out in January and in there it's the whole, the whole process of how to go from I have no idea how to sell to I understand now it's a, a system and building it into an authentic system that's congruent with who you are. And then once we get through all of that, it's then all my online strategies. So you learn everything you need to know about how to drive social traffic to your website, how to create a website that gets email addresses, how to grab those email addresses and market to them in a way that they go to a webinar or they go to a phone call with you in an automated way so that you just go to your computer every week and there's a bunch of phone calls already waiting for you. So that's the whole focus of the academy. It's the A to Z of creating. Do you say A to Z or A to Z in America? I always forget. Yeah. But it's, it's the A to Z of how to create rapid growth in your business and it's a full holistic approach. So you don't need any other program. That's really what it's built for. Now, who, who, who would you say that the academy is for compared to the one-on-one? -on -one? And then who, who would you say that the one-on-one? -on -one, because, I mean, obviously, working one-on-one -on -one with you personally, you're going to be able to go that much more in-depth to my personal business. So, what's interesting is I spent 14 months creating my academy. And not, not a, most people spend maybe a couple of weekends doing it. And the reason why I spent 14 months doing it is because I had over 150 five-star reviews and not a single less than that for my online one-on-one -on -one, for, for my one -on -one program. And the last thing I wanted to do is dilute that with a bunch of bad testimonials from the academy. So I did my best to mimic my exact results. So in my academy, you don't just get the academy, you also get seven hours of case studies that allow people to understand uh, how, the, how it's applied. I flew in my, custom, my successful customers from all over the world, so I didn't just have to be a talking head. And they talked about what worked, what didn't work, what barriers they hit, what learnings they made along the way, and how they overcame those barriers. I also, there's a group of, um, a, group, a community for like-minded people, so they can all share in, um, in the value that's inside the academy. They can share each other's stories and unified messages and give each other critique. I'm very involved there as well. But also, I didn't want to just sell a program and then not be there. So once a week at 4 p.m. Central, I answer any questions people have, give people feedback on their work. So the academy is really quite intensive. And it was kind of a bit of an ego killer, actually, when I realized the academy was delivering the same results as working with me one-on-one. -on -one. So I say to people that no matter what, if you start with the academy and then want to progress to working with me one-on-one, -on -one, every dollar you spend on the academy, I credit to working with me one-on-one. -on -one because I believe the academy will deliver results. But the, the academy is specifically built for service providers, people that have service provider businesses. So you'll see case studies in there from real estate agents to ghost writers to videographers to you know, food coaches, right? So it's predominantly built for service providers and that's the, that's the academy. Now, there's a lot of people that have product-based businesses in there as well because the system still works, but I've targeted specifically for introverts, uh, sorry, for, for service providers and it works really well for people that are introverted service providers. Now, the people that want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, and this is why there's product-based businesses in the academy because there's no downside to starting there and getting a foundation. The people that want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, the reason why they want to work with me one-on-one -on -one is generally because 
they're not self-motivated or they need somebody to hold them accountable. Like I will drag you kicking and screaming towards rapid growth if I have to. And the reason for that is it's three sessions. I'm going to expect you to have done work between them. Consider it like a boot camp. But the reason why I have so many five-star reviews and not a single one below that is because I drag some people kicking and screaming if necessary to get them to their goal because I want everybody to have an ROI at the end. I want them to have all the strategy for rapid growth and I want them to have implemented most of it and already to be attaining gains. So the people that come and do work with me one-on-one are two, two, two types of people. One, that needs somebody to be their drill sergeant and the other is they want to cut the learning curve in half. They don't want to do the hard yard work. They just want somebody based on my unique experience to say, here is what barriers and limitations you have in your goals. Here are the struggles in your mindset. Based on looking at your customer avatar and using your goals as a lens, here's what I believe your unified message is. Now, I don't do it like you know the, the branding people where they do $30,000 worth of marketing market research and they hand you this big colorful book with all this data and say, hey, here's your message that doesn't feel like you. I actually deliver your unified message like I'm you and you're the customer. And I explain what your unified message is, why it's congruent with you, and why your ideal customers will rally to that cause. And, you know, that really, it, it allows you to see it being presented to yourself. Now, that's 70, 75% of the time, that's absolutely spot on. You know, they say yeah, that, that's 100% right on the money. You know, you've encapsulated me better than I ever could. About 25, 30% of the time I'm dealing with someone pretty analytical. They want to go away and they want to think about it. And, that, you know, that's fine too. And actually, Derek Lewis, the guy I talked about before, the ghostwriter, he was my hardest client. He made me sweat on it for nearly two weeks. And then he got, I still remember the message actually. It was, damn you, I spent the last two weeks agonizing over this. The last three hours trying to come up with something better. Yours is the only one that works. Okay, let's go with that. Two weeks later, he made $40,000. So, that's the, 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 you know, I go through and I structure the unified message. I pick the niche market. I help with the packaging and the pricing and I help you craft the stories. And then I create the sales system for you and short, talk you through that process, both offline. So you learn how to embed your stories and message into the sales process, but also online to drive people to your brand and that sort of thing. But the difference is, I mean, still no, you're going to work hard during that process, but you're going to get results. And even though everyone in my academy still gets results, this is, it's, you know, it's six weeks and you're there, right? So that's, that's why people work with me one-on-one. Yeah, love it. So then you, you talked about the book several times, um, which is, uh, you know, I'm excited for it to come out, you know, because that, I mean, I was recently at a, 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 an event, a three-day event with a lot of top CEOs. And, you know, I mean, there was a lot of nine-figure incomers in that room. And, and the gentleman putting on the event asked, who in here in this room is an, an introvert? There's a hundred people in the room, hundred CEOs, and every single one of them raised their hands. You know, right? So I think a lot of people that are introverted think they're alone, but I think that there's probably more entrepreneurs that are introverts than not. Um, but it's something a lot of people struggle with. And and um, I know it doesn't come out until January, uh, but is there a place where you know? Do you have a place where people can can get on a waiting list or or learn more about it for when it's going to be released? Yeah, definitely. So and thank you for asking. So. The reason why I wrote the book was because everybody that sees me on a podcast, sees me speak on stage, sees me sell, assumes that I'm a natural extrovert and I have a gift of the gap. It's not true. But there's such a stigma around being an introvert that we don't like to talk to our friends about even the fact that we're an introvert and we hide the fact that we are. So, you know, I've got a, a podcast coming out in uh, October where it's going to be called The Introvert's Edge and it will interview high highly successful people from all different realms. I mean, I'm interviewing the mayor of Austin. I'm interviewing the Jamie Masters, the top number three podcaster in, uh, in the world for entrepreneurs, the founder, Jason, uh, the founder, Jason Cohen of WP Engine, um, all the way through to the founder of BNI, who only recently discovered he was an introvert when his wife said, no, you're an introvert and explained why. And he's like, you're totally right, right? So, I mean, he created BNI just because he wanted to create an introverted strategic way to meet people, right? So all these introverts, to help people understand that introverts are successful too. We just assume because they're successful, they're extroverted. And that's the stigma we've got to get over. Now, the book was written because the number one thing that most people struggle with that are introverted is that they shouldn't be able to sell because they don't have the gift of the gap. So I wrote the book, but because selling is one of those uncomfortable things for an introvert to learn, you know, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Brian Smith, the founder of Ugg Boots, who's also on the podcast, he said he's never read a book more than th- on sales more than three chapters in without throwing it away and just feeling disgusted that this is not something he could get behind. 
he offered to do an endorsement for my book because we're friends. But he's like, mate, I'm probably only going to read a chapter or two. He read the entire book in three sittings because he said, mate, I got involved. I, I fell in love with the stories. It's written like a novel, right? So the goal is that you enjoy it. You get, attra- you get engaged with the stories. You laugh out loud. Oh, and you just happen to learn sales too. Right. So that's why I'm really excited about this book. Now, for people that are interested in the book, I mean, if you go to matthewpollard.com forward slash growth and you can give me your email address there or anywhere on my website, you'll be able to get access um, to you'll be able to get access to the book because I'll email you as soon as it launches. Uh, But for people, it is available for pre-sale right now. Um, so for people that are really interested in the book, if they go to the pre-sale page um, and, and they buy the book, they'll get like, I think a 32% discount. That's what Amazon's offering right now. Um, but if they send me an email letting me know that they bought the book, I will send them the, I think it's the first 90 pages, which is the first chapter of the book. So they can start reading it now and, and enjoying, uh, enjoying the content. Because I think that if you read the first chapter, your perception will start to change already and you'll start to see sales in a different light. So I'm, I'm really excited. So please feel free. Now I'm going to ask that this doesn't go in the show notes, but I'll give my email address. Um, you can email me personally at Matthew at Matthew Pollard.com. So that's M A T T H E W at same spelling P O L L A R D.com. If you email me with the purchase receipt, I will give you the first chapter and I'm expecting you to let me know what you think about it. Cause I'm, 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 as all introverts are, we're all dying for feedback. So I would love to hear what you think. Yeah, no, that's amazing, man. Love it. So I know, I know we're getting long on time. So just two quick uh, last questions for you. Um, so knowing everything that you know now, if you could go back to yourself, that day number one of knocking those, uh, you know, 92 doors or whatever it was, no's to get your one yes. If you could go back knowing everything you know now and give yourself at that stage of your life two pieces of advice that you think would have just fast forwarded your success um, in, in every aspect of your life, what would those two pieces of advice look like? I think the first piece of advice I would tell myself is don't worry, everything's going to work out. <laughs> I mean, one of the, one of the, the sayings that I, I have now is that um, everything always works out. And some people say, how can you say that? Like everything doesn't always work out. And I say, well, here's the thing. I would prefer to be thinking positive and believing everything's going to be working out and be slightly disappointed occasionally when it doesn't than be planning for everything not to work out all the time and expecting to be miserable. So for me, focusing on everything is always going to work out also gives me more motivation because if you know you're going to, if you believe you're going to get a positive response or a positive outcome, you're going to work harder too, right? So, and also what I find is sometimes when I feel like things don't work out, like when I got my commission only sales job and that was the worst thing that could possibly ever happen to me actually ended up the reason for why I am where I am today. So focusing on the fact that everything always works out is one of the key principles that I absolutely live by. The second one would probably be not to take everything so seriously. I mean, I think that right throughout my businesses, I was always focused on making an impact on the world, setting the world on fire. And a lot of that was to do with the fact that I was trying to prove to everyone else that it was okay to be who I was because I grew up really introverted, really shy, bad acne. And obviously I got, made, I got teased a little bit throughout that process and people looked at me differently. So it was about proving to everyone else. It wasn't about proving to anyone else at all. And as soon as I stopped focusing on proving it to everyone else, I was much happier and I made more money, right? Because if your motivation is external, you're never going to be as happy or successful as if your, mo- if your motivation is centered on what you truly want. Yep, love it. Powerful stuff. So um, I know you've, uh, you've been on hundreds of podcasts. You've been on tons of, of TV, radio interviews, interviewed by magazines, um, and, and, and much more. Is there ever like the question that never seems to get asked, but you feel should be asked? That's a really good question. I think I said to you at the, at, at the start, if you asked me a question I wasn't expecting, I'd be ecstatic because I have been on a lot of interviews. Do you know what? I think the question that I would ask everybody, if, and I've got a new podcast coming out, so this is a good one. I've only done a few of the interviews and I'm doing a few more. Are you happy? So I think that there are a lot of really successful people. And this is an interesting one. So I remember there was a survey at a seminar that I went to where they got people to do an unofficial survey about all these, there was everybody, the, the, the thing was that they had to have been making over $200,000 a year just to be in the room. 
And they asked all of them whether they were good enough and whether they were happy. And predominantly the answer was no. See, the reason why a lot of us get into entrepreneurship is because our careers weren't working for us or we wanted to create something better for ourselves. But then we focused on the work mindset of fitting into a box, becoming a commodity, doing what was the safe way to make money. And we end up not doing what we love and we're not happy again. I think if somebody had asked me when I was 22, let's say I was 22, I had a $4.2 million annual turnover. I just got awarded the Young Achiever Award. And I remember going home miserable because if this was as good as it got, what the hell was the point? For me, I'm happier now than I ever have been, but it's because I'm doing what's aligned with my passion while supporting my family and doing what I love. So in the answer now is definitely yes, but I think you would have caught me horribly off guard and got a really different answer and probably a really honest one if you had to ask me that 10 years ago. Yeah. Now, when you, when you say happy, because, you know, happiness doesn't always equate to fulfillment, you know, I mean, sometimes happiness can be bought with a case of beer, right? So, so you know, how, how do you differentiate those? Because, it, you know, it's, I mean, you just seem like a guy that's so full of energy, so full of passion and, and you know, from uh, not knowing you're spending time personally with you but outside of this podcast, but on this podcast, you seem like you are just extremely fulfilled as a human being. Um, you know, I mean, how do you di differentiate the happiness to fulfillment personally? So I think people can have short-term happiness, definitely. But without fulfillment, they can't have long-term happiness. So for me, I used to, yeah, I could buy a case of beer and I could be obscenely happy on a Friday night. As a matter of fact, I did that a lot of the time in my 20s because I wasn't, entirely happy. I was making great money though, so I could afford some really great shots. But the problem was I was not fulfilled. You're right. So I wasn't fulfilled. But I think that you can be fulfilled at work. You can be fulfilled in life. You can be fulfilled in your family. There's a number of different fulfillments. I think that, and again, I think everyone has a different view on that. I am definitely fulfilled in work. I'm definitely fulfilled in life. And I'm definitely fulfilled in family. And because of that, I think I'm a long-term happy. So I think the higher level benefit is in, in Australia, we have a really bad saying, which is we're shitting rainbows. When we're really, really happy, we're shitting rainbows, right? Which is not something I should have said on the podcast, but we're an hour in, so let's do it. Um, if you are literally that happy, then you're definitely fulfilled. You're definitely happy. And I think that the answer is when you're asking the question, are you, not ha are you happy? It's not, are you happy now? Are you happy? Yep. Yep. Love it. Powerful stuff. And uh, to those watching and listening, I know I end every podcast with this, you guys, but information without implementation really is just the start of delusion. Information is no longer power. It's taking that information and taking action on it that then creates the power inside your life so you can create the life you truly know you want, deserve. And Matthew shared so many amazing pieces of advice with you. Take something that you learned, go out there and take immediate action on it so you can go out there and create that life you know you want, deserve. Also, below, whether you're on iTunes, YouTube, YouTube, Stitcher, the website, um, inside the, the notes below or down below will be links to, um, Matthew dropped a lot of links today about uh, his, his webinar, his programs, um, you know, some of those free downloads, all that will be below wherever you are. So just make sure you click on those. We'll also have a link to, to uh, his new book. Um, so make sure to click those, check those out below. And Matthew, man, I know how busy you are. I also know that uh, you're on holiday break right now. So it's a massive honor that you took this time to be here with us today. Mate, I was, I was really happy to be here and I hope this interview helps a, a lot of people. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, no, it was an epic time, my friend. Thanks again and all right, we will see you guys next time.